choir Omina from Native Instruments is, for me, the most innovative tool I know to generate classical choirs. We can combine different syllables with different playing styles with different dynamic levels. Oh, it's amazing! My name is Thomas Foster and in this video I will show you exactly how to work with Choir Omina, which is part of Complete 14. Good to have you here, let's go! To load the Choir Omina, there are two possibilities. Uh, number one, you load as plug-in in your door the complete control. Uh, here you click on uh, this arrow here and then you will find it, if you scroll down a little bit here, Choir Omina. And we have um, four uh, kind, uh, kinds of, of plug-in, of instruments. Um, the altos, the basses, the Sopranos and the Tenors. All right. Um, and you load it with a double click. But I told you there are two boss possibilities. Uh, number two is to use the Contact 7, uh, which is also new in complete 14. Here you have a new user interface, a browser for loading instruments. So you can click here in the left corner on this box here and find it. Where is it? Choir Omina. Uh, here it is with a double click. Or the classic way that I always use to load something, to find something, is to type in the first letters, just Choir, and immediately we see here all the possibilities um, and we load it with a double click. Also new in contact 7 which is new in complete 14 is this button here where you can reduce the user interface so you can give away this browser here to see just what you need. That's amazing. I like it. Um, and now we can use this area here, the blue area on your keyboard to play. And we can go to other syllables. So this was the A, let's go to the E. The I. The U. The M. Very nice. And you can also change these syllables here uh, with your keys. But it's very low. I have the big S88 complete control keyboard and I also had to go one octave down to be able to play them. But it's easy to paint them in your DAW, uh, in your performance. So uh, let's check this out. If I click on the C. <laughs> C sharp, it goes to the E, um, D, O, and the U, and the M. And don't worry, we have more letters and syllables than just these here, but I come to this a little later, because we also have here the possibility to change the way of, of uh, note. So this is sustain. Let's go to Macato, Staccato, and Staccatissimo. And also this you can change with the keys here. So So it's not easy to change here in two octaves in, within a live performance. But that's why they offered the sequencer mode. But we come to this a little bit later. So we can play something here in the blue area. We can use the purple area to change the syllables or in this case the letters. Uh, we can change in the red octave. Uh, if we play sustain, macato, staccato or staccatissimo. And we can use this big button here 
to change with this nice 3D animation the dynamic. But you also can do this with the modulation wheel. If you see here, I'm using now the modulation wheel to change the dynamic. Let's listen to this. All right. So that's how you work. Um, what else can we do? We can go to the mixer because in the moment we hear all four microphone positions with the same volume. But we can change this. Um, we can use four different microphone positions and we have a reverb. Uh, let's turn off the reverb. Uh, sounds a little bit more dry. And now let's listen to the microphone positions. Uh, and maybe we to hear better what we're doing. Let's go back to the main page and we go to staccatissimo because then we hear better the different. Um, and now I go to this S that means solo. So we are listening solo now to the close microphone position. Solo to the mid close. To the, maybe we turn on a little bit more the dynamic. Oh, that's too much. Something like this. Again, the close microphone, the mid, the decker. That's the decker tree, the microphones on top of the head of the conductor. And the hall. So, and now we can change the mix. We can say, uh, I want not too much to hear the close position, not too much the uh, close. Decker tree is okay, but very loud the hall because I want the choir to be far away. And let's turn on the reverb and make it really loud and see what's happening. <laughs> Or we can go to a very small room, like a club, club B maybe, could be a nice idea. And we turn down the reverb microphones uh, and very loud the close position. You can create your own sound, but take care that uh, every microphone that is active uh, takes CPU power. And if you don't have such a strong uh, PC, um, then maybe it's better you use the mix down. Then you have all four microphone position in the nice mix and you don't need so much CPU resources. So let's go back to the main page and now let's take a look to the sequencer mode in the sequencer mode um, you can just simply click one key and it's running through all uh, letters The connection is now this little thing here that we can change. So we can connect this with the crossfade to bring them a little closer. Now listen to the difference. Maybe we hear it better if we don't go to staccatissimo. Yeah, you hear the difference. This is separated and this is combined. Okay, but we uh, also can click a third time on it and then there is no connection. I have just a connection between the last two. Let's make them with a crossfade. And now I have to play uh, four times to hear four letters. Ah, 
A-E-I-O-U-M. Oh, it's a nice beginning of a nice idea. <laughs> But how can we change which, which letters or syllables we have? And how can we change the length of the note that you see here? So to do this, we need the edit mode. And to edit mode, you see here this pencil. So I click on this pencil and now I click on the A. And now I have three things that I can define for this uh, first, let's call it a button. Um, I can define a letter or a syllable. syllable. I can define an articulation. Uh, very important to know is also, if you have an articulation, uh, it doesn't matter what you choose here. Um, if there is no articulation, then this is what you get, right? Um, now I can go, for example, to this articulation and I make it a really long note like this. And the next note, let's make them short, like eight notes. And let's connect them. And instead of the E, why don't we take the NOM? to make it more interesting. Okay, let's see how this sounds. So this is a kind of little composer where you can create one sequence where you define for every note how long it is, means the duration, the articulation and the uh, syllables. A great tool. Uh, if you don't have the time to do this, you can also choose a preset. Uh, so you simply click here on this glasses here and then you can go through a lot of presets. You see, <laughs> yes, there are some presets. You can filter them um, and let's listen. <laughs> So what else can we do? Let's go out here. Um, we have here two in interesting buttons. I go back to the keys mode. Okay. Um, or maybe, no, sorry. Let's load uh, the first preset. Okay. And we go to the sequencer. Yeah. Now we can use, click this button. And now we can choose here the dynamic. So we start very soft, then we get louder and we get soft here again. Let's see. You see, we're starting very soft and then it's getting louder. Yeah. This is basically all the same feature. So you have it two times, you can change between two possibilities. All right, um, I think we saw everything that is important. Uh, maybe here are two more buttons. The settings, one times you have here some settings where you can change the order if it's forward, backwards, or what else do we have? Nothing. Um, the tempo, double time, half time. And here we have some more settings with the dynamic curve, legato mode, round robins. So... But I think we saw everything important. Uh, the last thing that I would like to show you, maybe we listen to another um, kind of choir. Uh, for this, I click this button here. Yeah, it's new. <laughs> so I had to search a little bit which button to press. So why don't we listen to the basses? Okay. Tuning is a little bit low in the beginning, right? <laughs> Let's see if this is also at another letter. Just 
just a little bit. Here it's not. Hmm. So I would recommend to re-record this one here again. But it also can be nice because it's more natural than everything is super perfect, right? Let's listen to some phrases. I created a YouTube playlist for you with all my videos for Complete 14. You find the link to this playlist in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Always stay creative. Cheers! We at Mugent have been working hard to create a new plugin that is more musical than anything else out there. We are thrilled to present the Mugent Player. Each instrument in the Mugen player comes with a composition, MIDI files you just drag and drop into your session, so you can be inspired not only by a sound, but also by an exciting melody or characteristic chord progression. All of our instruments and MIDI files can be downloaded from the cloud. This means that every time you open the plugin, there might just be a new patch or a new MIDI file waiting for you. Simply double click to load it into your plugin. In addition to the individual instruments, the Mugen player also has kits. These are arrangements that sound like a complete song. With a single click, you can load all the patches, and as soon as you've dropped the MIDI files into your DAW, you can start using them to create something new. But the most incredible thing is, the basic version of Mugen Player is free. Click on the link in the video description to get the Mugen Player. In it, you will find a large selection of instruments, MIDI files, and kits that you can download for free and start using right away. Get the Mugen Player now and create music inspired by great sounds and compositions. Mugen to make music.